Today we're going to jump right in and talk about the second really piece of the embouchure. And keep in mind, if you haven't uh, watched my previous videos on this, the first one was relieving mouthpiece pressure, understanding that that's detrimental to your plane. Uh, the next video was really the first piece of understanding the aperture controlled embouchure, which was, if you remember, um, your aperture. So we're talking about the, the size of your aperture. Now I'm going to pick up where I left off. When we were talking about the aperture size and your opening to your mouth, we're really discussing how your vibrating surface changes the pitch. So we want to think of how that works in physics. Well, typically what happens is we either make the vibrating surface um, vibrate faster by shortening the length of the surface or by changing the medium somehow, making it vibrate faster through uh, maybe tension, which can happen on a violin or a guitar string. So imagine you have a violin string, this is my violin, and I'm holding down somewhere like halfway in the string. I'm playing an octave higher than if I were to let go of the string. So if a string length this long is say a C, and half the length is a C above it, you can understand that shortening the, the vibrating surface allows the wave to travel from end to end twice as fast because it's half the length. And the same kind of thing happens with reed and uh, brass instruments. On reed instruments, it can happen in the reed. The more you break down on the reed, the shorter it gets. On brass instruments, your lips are your reeds. So basically, one of your lips is vibrating for each range of the trumpet. And if we're playing properly, when that lip is vibrating, you should be able to shorten the vibrating length and get a higher pitch. Now that sounds all cool and fun and yeah, that's super easy to explain. But in reality, there are a lot of other factors. So it doesn't work out exactly like that, but if you keep this principle in mind, then it's gonna really help you understand how to uh, embrace the aperture controlled armature and take your plane further. So the reason I'm talking so fast is one, because I'm really excited. And two, because there's a lot to cover in this video. So today we're going to be talking about air velocity and I'm going to just wrap it up as air speed. Uh, with that said, you know, if you're a scientist, if you're someone who really studies physics, or if you're just super anal about this stuff, yes, there are different words we could use and I should probably keep velocity. But we're gonna talk about airspeed because most of you are lay people that are just learning these concepts and you're not gonna go to school for science, so who cares? We're just gonna talk about the speed of your air. So, uh, before we were making the aperture smaller as we played higher. We were doing that because we're taking that lip length, which say was this long for a low note, and making it shorter to play higher. In general, you can take that length and reduce it by half to go up by an octave. So if I play this, then I'm playing four different octaves. When I do that, I'm reducing the length by half. So if I started here, then I'd be half, and then half, and then half. Or in other words, a half, let's see, the whole, half, a quarter, and an eighth. So when I'm playing a double high C, that'll be an eighth as long as if I played my regular low C. I hope that makes sense, but now let's think about the air speed. The air speed, um, even though again, it's not gonna work out in an equation exactly like this, you wanna think of it as doubling in speed as you play up by octaves. So, when I'm playing from that low C to the C in the staff, I should be moving my air twice as fast. So if you can imagine, you give this first note a value of speed one, then I need to make the C above that speed two or twice as fast. Okay, this concept for beginners usually is very easy. For people who have played for a long time, it can be quite the struggle because you may have never heard it or it just may not seem like it makes sense. In reality, when I build a physical apparatus to uh, produce higher pitches on the trumpet to test a trumpet, we do focus on those exact same um, theories. So we are trying to increase the speed by double and we're trying to close the aperture uh, and make it half the size per octave. The reason we do that is because they work together when you take this big hole and you make it a smaller hole, it speeds the air up to double, and that's how it works. Um, there are other pieces, and you'll see those in other videos, so I encourage you to watch the other videos 
to practice this, you may just literally, without the trumpet, just blow some air and consciously think, how fast is that air? What note is that? And then see if you can speed it up and slow it down. So I do an exercise like this and I'll do it up by the camera. Now they, that may not sound like a double high C, but it is a double high C. I went from low C to double high C. What I should say is, I went from low C to double high C and back down to low C. This is easier understood when you do uh, smaller octave leaps at first. So I'm just gonna do low C to C in the staff. I went from low C to C in the staff and back down. It doesn't look like or even sound like anything's happening, but it is. Now, can you play up to C in the staff without doubling the airspeed? Probably not. Um, you may think you can, but physics-wise, that doubled airspeed has to really be present. So you may not think you're doing it the way that I'm teaching you, and you may not be, but you wanna learn how to consciously change that. And that comes back down to aperture control, the first video, the one before this, where we're changing that size of your opening. If you can master that concept, everything else after this is gonna be really easy. And you won't have to think about the words mouthpiece pressure. You won't have indents in your lips where your teeth meet the mouthpiece. And you won't have that um, serious issue with either tone quality. Uh, a lot of times people that are pressure players have really great tone quality down low and maybe in the, in the middle, middle register, but the higher they play, the more they suffer pressure and the more the tone quality deteriorates quickly. And uh, let me grab that. Somehow my phone is making noise. Okay, let's see if I can stop it. Well, regardless, um, it stops. So tone quality uh, can really deteriorate as you play higher and higher if you're pushing too hard. However, you can still squeak out those notes. And if you push a lot of air, you can squeak them out until they're actually really big full body notes. So just because you can play high and loud doesn't mean you're doing it right. And a lot of you who watch this video right now know there's something up and your endurance severely suffers and cuts off the higher you play. You may only have five minutes of endurance even though you can play some high notes. Okay, so what you're probably lacking is some of these fundamentals. And a lot of it, a lot of the time, is the aperture control. I've given thousands of trumpet lessons and I've seen it again and again. Even a lot of the very best players who have endurance issues or tone issues somehow have some of this out of balance. All right, so think to yourself, what speed are you playing? What speed are you moving the air when you're playing different notes? And then assign your bass line to say one. So this is my one. Now G is kind of like one and a half. I don't really have to think about the numbers. What I have to know is that it's getting faster. But the easiest way to practice this is to get softer as you go higher. So now I'm gonna double the airspeed. And I wish I had lots of cool computer graphics that would just show you the airspeed going up on a chart. You can envision that. Um, I'm not super high tech here with videos, but uh, hopefully you get the concept. If you have questions about this concept or the previous one where we were changing the aperture size, then type your comments below or send me an email at harrelsontrumpets at gmail.com. I also want to point out that this horn, which I used in this video, is a very fine horn that I built, um, let's see if it says what year, in 2014. Somebody brought it back in on trade. I am plugging this horn in this video because I make a living building trumpets. It's important for me to make money so I can continue to educate and of course build great trumpets. But a lot of you don't realize that Harrelson Trumpets is only four people. And the four of us work really hard to bring you really high quality solutions uh, to your brass playing, whether it's a modular mouthpiece uh, option or mod kits or the trumpets. So I'm gonna bring out this trumpet and just show you quickly. It's a beautiful horn. It was refinished and rebuilt with a new bell just uh, maybe a month ago and this horn is available on our website if you are interested in this then I am offering $1,000 promo code right now 
So you can use that promo code to save $1,000 on this HT44 trumpet. And I promise you, it's not gonna let you down. It's a beautiful horn. Remember, whenever you buy a horn from us, you can trade into another horn anytime down the road and get the full value of your purchase. In other words, if you buy this for whatever price, in five years, you can still trade that in and get that credit and upgrade to a new horn, as long as it's in the original condition. So that's something we've offered uh, our Harrelson family members um, all along. So I wanna thank you again. I wanna encourage you to really step back and think about what is holding you back in trumpet playing. And I don't mean equipment, even though equipment is really cool. We're talking about the understanding of how your embouchure works and think about what aperture controlled embouchure means. Think about how that aperture can change in size, how you need to leave enough space for your lips to move and how airspeed plays an integral role into the entire equation. I wanna thank you and I'll see you next time.